Okay. So um, let's take a couple of questions now. If you have any questions about the basics, the about the uh, taxonomy of the data tree diagram, about the um, kind of concepts that we've talked about, let's go ahead and address them now before we move into the next exercise. So go ahead and just drop uh, a line into the questions window, and we'll um, we'll take a look at that. Uh, if there are any relevant questions that come up. No questions. You guys are all pros. That's great. All right, then let's go ahead and dive into the next exercise. Here we're going to be talking about, instead of building up our own data tree, um, in the case of the grid um, of the last exercise, we're going to work within a predefined data tree, right? So let's say an object that we're using in Grasshopper has, um, we're working with an object in Grasshopper and it gives us a data tree as a result. How can we work within the confines of that particular um, or, or the context of that particular exercise or file, right? So we're going to be navigating our data structures um, within the, this exercise, right? And again, the uh, geometry type that we're going to be working with for this exercise is going to be surfaces, right? And just as a recap, surfaces are a type of NURBS geometry defined by a two-dimensional parameter space. Right, so if we've created an extrusion or a sweep, let's say, right, uh, we not only see the shape of the surface, but we also have a numerical description, which is the parameter space. And the convention for defining where I am within this surface space with the UV coordinate is based on U and V. All right, so um, uh, surfaces are generally understood as a set of connected points that are related in not one but two dimensions. And we uh, very frequently will be building up our surfaces from a set of underlying curves. Right? Uh, surfaces inherit all properties from the curves that create them, and they have additional properties as well, which include area, surface, curvature, etc. And freeform surfaces, uh, which in the context of Rhino are going to be NURBS surfaces, they can be generated from and controlled by a control cage made up of control points. All right, so here's a, a quick representation of what that means. Again, we have a two-dimensional parameter space defined by U and V. And we also have within um, the, um, the way that the surface is defined a set of points that are related in two directions and um, within which, if we make any modifications to that, right, the surface will update. Okay, so we can move through uh, the space of a surface by using U and V coordinates uh, very easily, and that's what we'll be doing um, uh, here in this file. And just as a quick reminder for um, surfaces, right, all surfaces have four edges, right, and so no matter what the shape looks like, we're always going to have a two-dimensional space um, that we can move through, right? And again, uh, within the context of a, an application where we're working with surfaces, anything we grab from that surface is going to be related to that two-dimensional space, right? So um, our four-sided NURBS surfaces um, can be transformed into a sphere, right? Uh, this still has four edges and a two-dimensional space despite the in fact, the shape might not intuitively suggest that. All right, and um, again, every location within the numerical description of the space, which is U V, also has a related X Y Z coordinate. Right, so those two points, which are in the same, are essentially the same, have two definitions: one which is in the world, and one which is the in the U V space, and that's a um, kind of uh, trap that uh, we find with our users frequently is that um, these things are both the same and different, but just have a different way of being defined. All right, so we're going to be working with points on surfaces for this exercise, and in the end, we'll be taking a surface and connecting the points within the surface into a collection of polylines so that we have essentially a tessellation on the surface, which again is always going to inherit the uh, parameter space of the surface. So if we move our control points so that it is compressed in the center, the resulting polylines that we get as a part of our grid will also be compressed. Okay, so um, what are some of the um, 
objects we're going to be using in uh, Grasshopper that are working with data trees. Uh, we're going to use Simplify, but maybe first let's bounce back over to uh, Grasshopper and build up the um, kind of underlying part of the file before we start navigating the data structure. All right, so um, this was my uh, working version from the last exercise, so I'm going to save this. Uh, if we do anything different, we'll distribute the files again to you after the end of the course so that uh, you can see both the way we did them ahead of time as well as the way that we did them together. All right, so this was um, file one. And um, here in this file, we're going to be working with predefined data trees through the context of a surface. So let's go ahead and build um, a surface in, um, in Rhino. What I'm going to suggest that we all do is to um, make a plane surface, rectangular plane. So I'm just going to draw surface here, generally rectangular. Go into shaded view. All right, so here's my surface. And I'm going to rebuild this um, so I have a few more control points, uh, maybe 5 by 5 with a degree 3 in the UMV. That sounds good. And now I'm going to modify a few of my control points using the Gumball uh, manipulator in uh, Rhino 5. So I'll just move some of these guys down. That's interesting, but not what I want. All right, we have a nice smooth surface here. And it's got a little bit of curvature to it. That looks great. And um, now I want to get this surface into Grasshopper, right? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a surface container from our params tab. And uh, Ronnie and I call these uh, containers because we like to think of them as uh, kind of storage devices, right? They're things that we can put um, data into and store them there, right? So we'll go to uh, a simple surface container, grab that, and then I'm going to always uh, be grouping my objects, which is either Control G or Edit Group, and make sure that I name the group so that as we go, uh, we have a good idea of what uh, we're actually uh, doing. All right, so I'm going to right click and this is going to be my input surface. All right, and to get my uh, surface from Rhino into Grasshopper, I'm going to right click and say set one surface. And now this is gray and I have a surface here um, that's displayed from Grasshopper in the Rhino viewport. All right, great. So now we have a surface. Right? And if we wanted to, we could uh, examine what's inside here by the, uh, using the panel. Right? And it says that we have one referenced surface at index 0. That sounds great. And remember that we see the shape here of the surface, but that's also got a mathematical description. So if we were to drop in from the primitive, params primitive tab, a domain squared, put our surface into there, and then put the domain squared into our panel. We can now see what the parameter space is with, uh, for this particular surface, right? Um, the UV space of this surface is from 0 to 29 and 0 to 17, all right? Um, so we have both the, the capacity to access the shape as well as numerical uh, description of the surface for this file. And what we want to do is we said we wanted to uh, create polylines that were on this surface that um, that give us a kind of grid, right? Um, and so to do so, we're going to first go to points from our surface. So under the surface tab, under uh, utility, we're going to do divide surface. This will create a grid of UV points on the surface, right? So if I plug my surface into S, U asks for the number of segments in U and V. So I'm going to go ahead and make uh, integer sliders with my shortcut that I um, showed before, which is to double click and say I want at least five, and maybe right now I'll start with 15, and then I want to go up to maybe 40. All right, so now I've got an integer slider set up. 
you'll plug that in for you. I'm going to hold Alt and, dra uh, and drag my slider so that I get a duplicate of it. And this will be my U, div U divisions, and this will be my V divisions. All right. So now I've got control over how many points I have on my surface in the U and V. And if I look at the output of this object, we'll see that not only do I have the points in X, Y, Z space, but I also have the points in U, V space. Right? So again, here's that difference we were talking about. Um, this is producing points, and at that location, we can describe them relative to their uh, relationship to the origin of our modeling environment or the origin of the surface, which I'm going to guess it is down here at the lower left-hand corner. Okay, now what else do we notice about what we see coming out of uh, this object? We don't just have one list of points, but we have a data tree, right, where our, we have multiple lists of points. So let's go ahead and grab our Pram Viewer from Param's Utility Pram Viewer, and let's take a look at the data structure, right? So if I put UV into here, in my case, I have 16 branches, each with 15, and this has to do with the numbers that I'm specifying here in my sliders. So notice that in uh, this case, this object, the surface, uh, divide surface, it generates as many branches plus one relative to what we ask for for the number of U divisions. So U divisions plus one is always going to equal the number of branches that we're generating, right? And so in that way, we're, we have uh, rows of points, sorry, columns of points relative to the orientation of my surface. So 26 columns and 10 elements within each uh, list, right? So again, the data structure is being created directly from the inputs that we're specifying back here. 